And now for the smoke test. Well, uh, that's not good. All right, let's try this again. I just reset the power supply. Yeah, it's not happy. So the motherboard won't post when the Voodoo 5 is attached with power. And would you look at that area right there? That really looks like a capacitor blue. Now that was on the Voodoo 5 before I powered it up, so it didn't just now happen. So it looks like one of these suckers around here has gone bad. I'm hoping it's not this one or the one you can't quite see here, um, because I have tantalum capacitors I can replace these with right now and see if I can make this thing work. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, clean all that off and see if I can get it to post with the capacitor residue gone. made it through. Eh. Seems like there's something there. I don't know. Eh, let it dry and then try it out. It seems like it's all along the whole back of the card. There's something here, here, and all the way over here. I didn't remove any stickers. Is that where it touched in the bag? Is that where the plastic presses against it? Has the whole thing had problems? Or is that just where it's been rubbed against? I mean, it didn't really come off. So hopefully it was just rubbed against right there. This area down here doesn't look all that great either. So now I'm really starting to wonder what went wrong with this thing. Well, that sucks. The Voodoo 5 just posted fine in the old 98 machine. So there's nothing wrong with it. If I reset the computer, you can see right here, Voodoo 5 5500. This is Editing Act Makuku, and I want to pause and explain a few things here, because I have a much clearer mind now than Recording Act Makuku there has. Now at this point, I only had about a month left before the anniversary of Windows 98. So if I had to order anything for this computer to get it going, it was a really short deadline to make sure that it would get here and work in time. So I wasn't quite thinking clearly and missed a few shots because I was afraid I was going to have to pay eBay scalper prices for another new Voodoo 5 to get it here in time. At this point I wasn't totally sure that the Voodoo 5 needed to be recapped. I've read some AGP incompatibilities between a Voodoo 5 and some Intel motherboards, or more specifically, universal AGP slots. So I was concerned I wouldn't be able to use a Voodoo 5 in there at all. Well, it works with something that's not a Voodoo 5. Now after putting it in the old 98 machine, I found that the card did work, but when I was trying to move around some cables inside, I bumped one of the capacitors on it and found that it was extremely hot. Now this tells me that there was something wrong immediately, and I pulled the card out of the computer and just set it aside. Now that it was apparent that there was a hardware failure, I knew that I needed to start looking at the capacitors again. So I decided to start pulling off the capacitors in that area near the power connector where it was getting hot. That 100 microfarad super low ESR cap is way out of spec. These 10 microfarad caps aren't doing so great either. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to recap the Voodoo 5, which uh, sucks. I think this worked in the old 98 machine because I don't think the board had an AGP over current protection, which is why this capacitor got so hot. The Intel motherboard likely detected how much current the card was drawing, attempting to heat this up, and shut the whole computer down. Either way, though, all the capacitors I pulled off and tested were extremely bad, so all of them need to be replaced. I'm going to interrupt here one more time to show you a clip I recorded after the recap. You would not believe how many people leave comments before finishing a video, and I'd like to stave off the preemptive negative remarks about my soldering skills or iron. That was a lot harder than it should have been. And, I mean, it really was a lot harder than it should have been. It turned out that my uh, tip I was using on my Metcal was bad, I'd swapped out to another one when I went to go do some finishing touches on it, and this one was a lot better. So, uh, I guess rip STTC138. You have served me well, but you shall no longer. Alright, well, here we go.
All right, one decapped Voodoo 5. Now I just need to put the new capacitors on, which I don't have quite yet, and then we'll be able to test it for real. I have already gone ahead and scrubbed it off to get the flux and, well, some of the capacitors leaked, so I had to get off that as well. I really hope none of the capacitor juice got under the PGA chips because there's not a whole lot I can do to get that out. The best I could probably do is to soak the board in isopropanol and hope that it dilutes outside of the BGA so I can clean it off. After it became obvious this was a capacitor problem, with the help of PC bones on Vogons, we were able to determine what the closest modern equivalent parts were to replace those capacitors on a Voodoo 5. Mauser had the best prices and availability at the time, so I went ahead and put together a cart with the capacitors you need to be able to recap a Voodoo 5. There's a bit more than you need, but this gives you enough that you could do it and make a few mistakes. So if you have to recap a Voodoo 5 yourself, I highly recommend just ordering this cart. Alright, I just got the new capacitors in, so it's time to finish this up. Here's our 100. That doesn't go to this. Here is our 470. And here are our 10s. They're a bit bigger, but I think they'll be fine. Yep, all good. All right, I'm gonna start out by tinning the negative side for every capacitor. Okay, now to start putting them on. That was a lot harder than it should have been. And I mean, it really was a lot harder than it should have been. It turned out that my uh, tip I was using on my Metcal was bad. I had swapped out to another one when I went to go do some finishing touches on it. And this one was a lot better. So uh, I guess rip STTC138. You have served me well, but you shall no longer. But now it's time to throw this back in the computer and see if it works. All right, this is the first boot. Let's find out. Let's turn on the power supply first. All right, this is the first boot. Let's find out. Well, that's a good sign. Oh, I think it's working. The Voodoo 5 lives. Oh man, it is so relieving to see that thing whirring away in there. I really wasn't sure I was going to be able to resuscitate it, so oh, that is a relief. Well, I'm still in the middle of recording the uh, new 98 machine video, actually, so I got to finish that. This has been a frustrating interlude, but at least I can continue. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little look behind the scenes, and I'll see you next time. But wait, there's more! The next day when I went to continue filming, the Voodoo 5 was dead again! Now, I suspect that my fears of electrolytic fluid being underneath the BGA chips turned out to be true, and it had crept somewhere new that I'd previously cleaned it out. So I proceeded to give the card a 70% isopropanol bath for two hours. Then I rinsed it off with 91% isopropanol. While letting it dry, I noticed that the solution I'd soaked it in had turned yellow, which made me very optimistic that was going to work. And lo and behold, after I put it back in the computer, it was fine. 
and it's still fine now, nearly a month later. So that was the final fix. The capacitors were definitely bad, but it needed to also be fully cleaned. 